Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to this media conference with Marcus Rashford. As ever, we'll do a fair share of questions in the room and those on Zoom. We'll start in the room with Carve Solikov from Sky Sports News. Marcus, first of all, um, there's so much history surrounding England versus Scotland, so much interest in it. Does it mean as much to the players as it does to everyone else? Yeah, I think definitely, you know, um, as players you want to play in the, the biggest, most historical games and I think for, for our careers this is going to be up there with one of the best games that we that we play, um, one of the games that we remember for, for the rest of our careers. So, um, you know, for me I look back to the last time I played against them um, and the, the atmosphere, the the uh, build up to the game it was it was a, a unique game um, and now to do it in a, in a in the Euros is is definitely a moment that we're all looking forward to and what kind of game do you think it will be do you think it will be more physical than a normal international fixture for this England side will it be a typical kind of game between two British sides um, I think it it's going to be a a, a tough game uh, for sure um, it's going to be a game where we're going to have to be good at things that are outside of our comfort zone, as, as you could call it. Um, but, you know, Scotland are effective in, in different ways, so we have to be able to match them, compete with them, um, and then get the ball down and, and play our football as well. So it's going to be a, a game that we're going to have to be concentrated on. Um, and, you know, the lads have trained well leading into it, so I'm um, definitely looking forward to it. And whenever people think about England versus Scotland, and the Euros, everybody thinks about Euro 96 and Paul Gascoigne's goal. Do you think there is anyone in this England squad, including yourself, who could have a similar impact to the kind of impact that Paul Gascoigne had? Or was he just a unique one-off talent? Um, you know, I think for us, it's, it's just about winning, winning the game. Um, we've got lots of people that are going to be in the starting eleven and that are going to be on the bench that can that can come on and, and, you know, change the result of a game um, in no time. So I think for us, we, we're, we're looking at it in terms of winning the game and getting the job done. Um, you know, if, if, we, if we do manage to win the game, we're likely to, to go through to the, to the next round, um, which has been the aim since we, since we joined up. You didn't start the game against uh, Croatia. Obviously, Gareth has so many options, especially in those wide positions up front. Do you sometimes feel sorry for him because he just has so many players to choose from? <laughs> and what kind of substitute are you? Were, you? were you very disappointed to miss out on Sunday? Yeah, it's obvious every, every single player wants to wants to play. Um, but you know, from the tournaments that I've been to in the past, um, from doing you know really well in, in in Russia, it's it's clear that you you need. You know, you need everyone to to go long distance in a in a tournament, and um, you know whether you're on the bench or you or you start, and you have to be ready to come on and and do your best, basically. And um, that's what that's the mentality of of the of the group. Um, and it's important that we we keep that mentality um, going forward if we want to be successful and, and win things. And the Scotland players have made it clear that they will be joining you in taking the knee before the game. How important do you think that is as a symbol of solidarity and unity? Yeah, I think it's it's an important message. Um, and, you know, we, we, we spoke about it in camp and, um, you know, we, we recognise that it's a very important message. And if you want to spread important messages, there's no better place to do it than on, on the biggest stage. Um, and, you know, that's why we continue to take the knee. So them taking the knee as well was is, a, is going to be a definitely a good thing um, and like I said it will, there's more of us spreading the, the correct message so um, hopefully it has a, a big influence on, on you know people around the world Thanks Carvey now we'll go online briefly with a question from Jack Pitbrook from The Athletic Hi Marcus um, lots of talk this week as always about Raheem Sterling who obviously plays in a similar position to you um, how do you assess his performance against Croatia and what's he like as a, as a teammate and a bloke around the camp? Yeah, Raheem's, um, you know, he's a, he's, he's, he's a good guy. He's always been a good guy. Um, ever since I've come into, you know, the national team and sort of joined, joined him in the team, he's always been good for me and um, someone who, 
you're always pushing each other to, to do better whilst we're here and um, he's, he's a good guy to, to be around. Um, you know, I'm, I'm buzzing for him that he, that he got the goal um, and ultimately it was, it was the goal that won us the game. Um, so yeah, hopefully he can, he can come up with that more times throughout this tournament. Thanks, Jack. We'll go back in the room with Ollie Foster from BBC. Hi there, Marcus. Um, you talked about England-Scotland games. You were involved four years ago in that World Cup qualifier. A crazy game, those Lee Griffith free kicks. Then Harry Kane pops up with an equaliser even later. You talked about, yes, they are different. What is it? Is there an extra bite to the tackle? Is there an extra intensity? Do you sense that coming off the Scottish players wanting so much to beat England? Um, I think... In, in football, everyone wants to beat everyone, but there's some games where, you know, the, the there's there's how the game's actually being played, and then there's the atmosphere and and the crowd and um, you know, how much you actually wanna wanna win. Um, it all comes together, and it, there was just something unique about about that game. Um, and yeah, it's, it's similar to the games that have played for, for club, you know, against like City and, and Liverpool, um, them type of games, you have you have a different, it's a different feeling. Um, you can't really put, put a finger on it about what's different because as a player, you, you approach every game the same, but just to build up the, the fans, the, the energy, it's it's a unique game and I'm definitely looking forward to, to it. Just getting goosebumps now, the way you kind of <laughs> describe it. Um, when you, um, we heard from Tyrone Mings yesterday talking about the pride, the excitement uh, of getting the nod to start, you know, in the first Euros match and obviously, you know, going on to keep a clean sheet and everything like that. On the flip side, how did you take it when you found out that you weren't starting? Um, I think, you know, you have to be a professional about it. There's, you, you can't say that you, you know, you're not upset or annoyed because I think as a player that's natural. Um, you know, you want to play every game, but it's um it's about the your reaction to that and if you start putting your head down and sulking and not training properly it doesn't have a good good effect on the team um and like i said before that to to go on and win a, a big competition you need the whole team and that includes training every day we, we all want to be pushing each other um and yeah you know it's it's the manager's the decision um and you have to you have to respect that and you know, for me, I just just keep working and um, keep working hard in, in training and, and in the games when I do come on or if I start. So, um, yeah, you just you, you move on from it. You know, it's, I'm, I'm happy that the, the team got the, the three points um, and that's the, the most important thing. Yeah, you came on for the last 20 minutes, obviously, to see out the result. But carrying that into the last couple of days training, do you think... Right. Okay. I didn't start against Croatia. I need to up my game here, you know, with the lads to show that I deserve a, to get in there. And you know, we've talked about <laughs> the ridiculous competition. Um, I, I've been doing that since I've since I've come here, and um, you know, like I said before, there's only 11 players that can that can start the game. So when you've got a squad full of, you know, 20, 25, 26 talented players, and you know, at the end of the day, people are going to be going to be left out and. And there's people that are going to start the games. Um, it's just about when you do come on, just doing the right things and trying to be professional, like I said before. Um, and I don't think that that's not going to change. It's something that I've always I've always tried to do. Um, and yeah, look, going forward, I'm just going to keep keep working hard. And um, whether whether I'm needed in the start, starting eleven or off the bench, it, it is what it is. A uh, couple of good games last night on the telly, w weren't there? We had um, Germany, France, you know, and and Portugal. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo showing that uh, you know age is not a, a it's just a number. Yeah. And I, th I think you were 11 when he left Man United. What, what influence did he have on you? And what would it mean to come up against him here at, at this at this tournament? There's every chance you could face the Portuguese in, in the last 16 if things sort of go. Yeah, to to play against Portugal will be. You know, a, a, a great feeling for for everyone in the squad, I think, because to play against some of the, the best players in the world, we want to test ourselves against the best. That's the reason why we push ourselves every day. Um, we don't want, you know, an easy ride. We want to we want to play against the best teams in in the world, and um, you know, we want to do well against them. So, um, you know, for the for the players, it'll it'll be an amazing experience. Um, like you said, Cristiano is an, an unbelievable unbelievable player and um, 
it almost becomes normal when he defies the odds now and um, it's just the way his career has been from the from the very beginning um, so yeah it'll be a great experience to, to play against him um, but you know you, you can't say that you, you're looking forward to play against him but yeah we'll, we'll enjoy it so just those early years, that, that influence that he had on you? Yeah, just, just watching him grow really and develop into the, the player that he's become was the, the great thing about it. Um, because when he, I remember when he first started playing, he wasn't the Cristiano that you see you know, today or five years ago. He was a different, a different player. He was always dribbling, um, always taking people on. Um, and then just as time went on, his decision-making just he just turned into an animal. He was scoring, he was assisting. Um, you know, like you say, he's how old is he now? 35, 36. And he's just he's he's, he's scoring goals left, right, and centre. So um, I don't have a, a bad word to say about him. I think he's you know someone that a lot of people look up to, including me. Thanks, Ollie. Uh, online now with Zoom uh, to Jerry Cox from Haters. Hi, Marcus. How are you? Hello. You okay? Yeah, good. Um, Another player who's uh, adapted his game, obviously, is, is Harry Kane. Um, some suggestions, I think it was Jamie Carragher earlier in the week, said he's perhaps not the player he was at 2018 when he won the Golden Boot. Um, but his stats suggest he's actually getting better. I mean, you see him in training every day. You, you play alongside him at times. What, what, what do you make of Harry? Has he, has he improved as an all-round football? I think for a long time now, he's, he's been, you know, one of the best forwards in the world. Um... For me, it's his, his all-round game. It's not just his... Everybody knows about his goal-scoring ability, but there's, there's things that he does on the pitch, um, the way he holds the ball up. Um, in difficult moments, he, he, he wins fouls for the team. And he does a good job defensively. And his all-round play is, 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 is really at a high level. So I've, I've thought for a while that he's, he's been one of the best number nines in the world. Um, and yeah, nothing... Nothing that he does now, you know, changes my mind. So, um, you know, last season he, he performed unbelievable. Um, I think in the league, 23 goals, 14, 15 assists or something. So it's a, it's a massive influence that he has on games. Um, and put that alongside the work that he does off the ball and um, the dirty work, as you can call it. It's, it's something that you can't um, not look at and, and appreciate. So, um, you know, I'm... I'm pleased that he's had such a good year and hopefully he continues that now in, in the rest of the tournament. Thanks, Jerry. Now back in the room with Carrie Brown from Bean Sports. Okay. Um, you wrote um, a really um, telling moment in your book about how when you were young you didn't have boots sometimes and your brother wouldn't let you play with the big boys if you didn't have boots on and you had to sit frustrated not being able to play. Uh, is it that bad? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> um, I think... You know, for me, when I was a kid, all I wanted to do was play football. And um, when someone tells you that you can't play football, you, you're not happy about it. Um, but yeah, it's just part of of growing up and part of my childhood that, you know, as I've got older, I learned to just appreciate because everyone's journey is unique to them. And that's what makes it special. I was lucky to be pitched like, by the bench just as the final whistle called was blown. and, and Jaden and Ben were the first to just jump up and, and applaud. It doesn't seem at all that there is this frustration that as much as everyone wants to be playing, there's more a sense of, look at our bench, look what we've got. Do you think if you had this squad for the last World Cup final, you could, you, World Cup, you would have got all the way to the final? Um, it's difficult to, to say, really. I think the games, even the two games against Croatia were, were slightly different, the one in the World Cup and the one that we played um, the other day, they were slightly different games, so it, it requires different different players. Um, but yeah, the, the main thing I take from that is just the togetherness of the, the squad. Um, you know, I'm sure that the, the large Jaden and, and, and Ben were disappointed. Um, but, you know, for them, winning the game is the most important thing and you manage to almost push push the individual frustration to the side and um, put the team first and it's it's important in, in tournament football it's it's important um, and yeah since that game the two lads have have trained well um, and yeah there's there's just posit positivity in the in the camp and you know it's important that we keep that going um, keep training well keep pushing each other and just keep trying to win games 
How much have you heard from Scott? <laughs> <laughs> no, I spoke to him the other day. Um, you know, it's going to be uh, a different experience for us. Um, but it's definitely one that I'm, I'm proud of. Um, I'm pleased for Scott and his, and his family. Um, you know, we've been playing together since we, was, since we was kids, since we was eight or nine years old, ten years old. Um, so to be playing against each other in, in one of the biggest competitions in, in football is, is an amazing achievement. Um, and yeah, we're just looking forward to it, um, but hopefully we, we win. <laughs> Um, so Alex Ferguson is a massive hero of you and has been so supportive as well in you getting school meals to kids. Um, you're going to upset him if you win this. <laughs> yeah, um, yes, so Alex, um, yeah, he'll definitely be upset. He's a, he's a passionate guy, um, but, you know, we have, to, we have to do our best to try and win the game. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, we're fully concentrated on, on the game and, you know, we're, we're going to do our best to get, get, get another touch? three points. What's that? Has he been in touch? No, not recently. I, I was speaking to him when he brought his, his film out and yeah, that was the last time I spoke to him. But, you know, what a, what a person, what, a, what an individual. Um, and yeah, there's only, like I said about Cristiano, there's only good things that I can say about Sir Alex from, from my own experiences and, and just, just watching him closely, um, you know, growing up. There's only good things that I can, that I can say about him. Um, talking about great leaders, you sat down with Barack Obama the other day and he said at tw when he was young he didn't imagine he would be the president of the USA and at 23 years of age you are further ahead than he was. Can you rule out being a prime minister of this country when your football career is over? Yeah, I probably can because it's not something that I, um, I, I grew up wanting to do. Um, so it's not, you know, my, my mind's not on that really. Um, but yeah, it's, it was great speaking to him and I've enjoyed just speaking to people like that and just learning from them and taking what I can um, from the stories that they tell me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's something that I'll always remember. Thank you, Thank you Kerry. Uh, back online with Alistair Lamont from BBC Scotland. Thanks very much. Hi, Marcus. Um, both squads have changed quite markedly since that game four years ago. And obviously you've been to the World Cup semis since then and we've qualified for our first major tournament in a long time. I just wonder if you could assess for me how the squads have improved and particularly in Scotland's case with the emergence of the likes of McTominay and also McGinn and so on. Yeah, I think um, Scotland's team, they've got a lot of players in there that have won things. Um, and that's important in, in tournament football. Um, you know, Robertson at, at left back is is won some of the the biggest trophies in in world football. And that experience of being in them big games, you can't underestimate it because it's it's very important. Um, and that can actually the rest of the squad can feed off that. Um, and all the likes of of Scott McTominay is a, a great player. He's won trophies. He's played in big games um, and had big moments in big games. So them type of experiences, them, them qualities, we have, to, we have to respect and um, we have to go to the game super concentrated and, and ready for, for whatever Scotland are going to throw at us because they're a team that uh, can play in a few different ways, a few different styles and they can hurt you in different ways. So um, we, have to, we definitely have to be ready for that. Thanks, Alistair. Uh, back in the room with Dan Salford Jones from ITV. Hi, Marcus. Um, it, it, there's a lot of stuff here to keep all the players entertained when, when you're not training. I just wonder if you find time to do any of that or whether you have your, so much of your own stuff going on that, that that keeps you occupied when you're not training. No, no, I've been, I've been playing a bit of basketball with the, with the lads. Um, what else have we done? Yeah, a little bit of cards. Um, there's, a, there's a few things going on in there, but it's, it's good, you know, it's, it's keeping things natural and, and, and relaxed really and um, when you're so focused on the games and, and training it's important to have the time away from it to just to switch off for, for an hour or two um, so yeah I think they've done a, a great job here setting, setting this environment up and um, for us it feels like it feels like home and that's important because we want to be here for you know hopefully five weeks so um, we want to make it as, as comfortable as possible and um, you know the, the staff and, and the team have, have worked very hard on, on making that environment possible um, 
and yeah, like I said, it's it's been it's been fun so far. So hopefully that that continues. And is it different not having Jesse Lingard with you at this at this camp? Because you had him there in Russia. Yeah, it's obviously slightly different. Um, but everyone brings different things to to the team off the pitch, and um, there's some there's some funny guys in in the squad. Um, so it's 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 all about just keeping positive energy and you know looking forward to to the next game, and we want to stay on that sort of rhythm and, and momentum. And for me, that's the best way to to approach games. You want to you know we, we we're, we're happy that we won the last game, and we want to take that energy into the into the next game. Thanks, Dan. Uh, we'll go back online to Marcello Courage from TV Globo. Hi, Marcus. Good afternoon. Uh, yesterday, I went to Gainsborough Primary School in East London, where they painted that mural to you. And it's remarkable to see eight, nine, ten years old children speaking about helping each other and the ones who need most in their communities. Um, and I was wondering if your goal with all that you've done in last year is also spread this sort of awareness for the future generations of British citizens. Uh, and also, if you think more footballers from other countries, for instance, can join you in this fight against hunger worldwide. Yeah, um, you know, for me, that's the main reason why, why I started doing what I was doing. Um, you know, I wanted to, to help children and show them that there's, there's ways um, different ways to go about things in order to, to try and help each other a little bit and I just think if you if you help the, the young ones um, and they grow up with this type of mentality and, and commitment towards something um, that's how you make sustainable change otherwise it, you may be able to, to change something for you know two or three years but it, it, it just won't last um, so I wanted to start speaking to the, the younger kids um, and just connecting with them, and I think I've, I've managed to do that so far. And like you said, that that example is is brilliant for me to hear because it's the reason why I, why I wanted to start doing it. Um, so looking forward, I hope that that continues. Thank you, Marcello. And we'll finish this live section with one last question from Ian Abrahams of Talksport. Hi, Marcus. How are you? Good, thank you. Hi. Um, it's sort of two questions in one, really. First one is, obviously, if you beat Scotland, you'll be through to the, the next stage of the competition. And you face France or Portugal if you win the group. So, obviously, England benefited last time from not winning the group in the World Cup and having a slightly easier run. So, is that on anybody's mind? Uh, and secondly, Deck Leister said that if you're going to win the tournament, he'll have his first ever pint. Can I ask you what you'll do if England win the tournament you've never ever done before? <laughs> Um, yeah, we we obviously want to win every game. Um, you know, it's it's as simple as that. Really, we're not thinking about coming second to get a, an easier run or anything like that. We want to you know approach every game with the mentality that we're going to win. Um, and to be fair, that's always been the mentality of of the staff and and the players here anyway. So, not much is going to change in in that regard. Um, and you know, God knows what's what's going to happen if we win. I hope I hope that we we do win. It'll be a, an amazing experience um, watching Deck have his have his first pint. <laughs> um, but yeah, on a, on a serious note, it's something that the country's not not managed to do um, in a long time, and we 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 definitely want to do our best to try and bring that joy back to the the nation. Thanks, Ian. That concludes the live section of this media conference. We'll now move on. To